welcome, welcome to Idea Boston, and thank you so much for coming to uh, this presentation on uh, media coverage of Italians abroad. Um, we have today um, three not only uh, great representatives of um, uh, journalists who, who do this work covering uh, what Italians do outside of Italy, but also three great friends. Uh, and so it, for me, it's, a, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to have them uh, all three here. Um, uh, Umberto Mucci is the uh, founder and editor of uh, We the Italians, uh, which is a, an amazing website um, that really uh, gathers all this information uh, about Italians um, in the US um, and all across the United States. And it is really um, oh, an enormous and a very valuable container uh, for the community in the United States. And, and he does an amazing job at that. And he is also the author of uh, the book, Really Italian. Um, Michele Pilla is, is a dear friend um, from Montaguto, and, uh, which, is, um, which is also at the center of his uh, recent novel, uh, just published this year, uh, Goodbye Irpina. And um, he is the founder also of um, Patrimonio Italiano TV, which is a web television that covers what Italians do uh, around the world. And we are talking from the United States to Brazil to Australia, China, you name it. Where there is an Italian, Michele will find him and he will tell uh, his or her story. I'm looking for you. <laughs> He's <laughs> looking for, for them. Uh, Stefano Sarimbeni, I mean, how do I introduce Stefano Sarimbeni? I mean, everyone knows him. If you don't know him, I mean, where have you been living? It, it's right? your problem. It's your problem. <laughs> it's your problem. Uh, but Stefano. National treasure. <laughs> uh, I have known Stefano since arriving here in Boston. He was the first person who really um, helped me get my feet on the ground, I have to say, because I uh, am a journalist um, by background, although now I do other things, but I always, uh, born a journalist, you're always a journalist, right? And, um, True that. and Stefano, I told him, I'll carry your cables, uh, just tell me where to go, and, and so that's how we started our, our little adventure together. True and, story. Um, and so, me and Stefano have been collaborating, uh, but we've been, you know, good friends ever since. So, uh, thank you all three for being here today, and uh, without further ado, I will uh, leave the word to you. <laughs> Grazie ancora. Hi everybody, uh, it's not easy to speak after Stefano. Uh, my name is Umberto Mucci. asleep. I was uh, born and raised in Rome, Italy. And um, I am the founder of We Italians. We Italians is a media company that has some tools that tells the Italian American stories to, to Italy and tells Italy to the Americans and to the Italian Americans in a different way. Uh, basically, we promote every day 25 news about Italy and the United States, or positive things about Italy. Um, we have a magazine, monthly, online, for free, that has 16 columns about the Italian excellencies. And let me tell you, by the way, that I don't think that there's any country that gives 16 excellencies every month and going on and on and on was published to 120 issues of the magazine. So that's how Italy is amazing to me. We have a newsletter that goes to 100,000 Italian Americans uh, all over the country. Uh, we have 1,600 uh, websites regarding Italy in the United States from a non-commercial point of view. Uh, enlisted in, the, in our archive. We divided the United States in nine areas. And so this would be New England, of course, and of course Dante Alighieri of, of Cambridge is among the, those 1600. Uh, we are on the main social media, and uh, uh, I interview every month a couple of persons who give me uh, particularly uh, interesting point of views about something about it in the United States. Art, culture, uh, commerce, um, whatever you, you, you think about, when you think about the relation between Italy and the United States, they're on topic. I've done 20, 100, uh, 220 uh, and it keeps going. Um, so this is we details, this is what I do. Um, and um, let me tell you, uh, what we're doing in Italy uh, right now is uh, trying to defend Columbus. Now, 
you all know what happens to Columbus here in the United States. Um, Italy, don't. Uh, in Italy, nobody knows anything about that, uh, and probably nobody know, cares about that. That's the reason for that, I think, it's first of all because we are a little bit more concentrated on our belly. I am talking about we in Italy, the Italians who live in Italy. And second, I think that we gave so many heroes and pioneers to history that uh, Columbus is just one of them. It is, is one of the most important, but still, we gave hundreds of people to history. If we gave just 20, it would be simpler, but uh, Columbus is, statistically, Columbus is just one of them. It is, to me, one of the best. Um, so you all know about Columbus. Um, let me tell you some stories, a few stories. First of all, we have a saying in Italy, we say, non è un santo, when we say about somebody that, that he's not saying it, he's down, he or she has done something wrong. Well, I don't know if you know that a hundred years ago, the Italian Americans tried to have him proclaimed saint by the church. Mm -hmm. Because he evangelized a couple of uh, continents. And the church did that dossier, and they refused to do that just for one reason. Because he had a son outside a marriage. He wasn't married with a woman that gave him the son Ferdinand. Even he left her and, and him uh, a lot of money from his uh, testament, so he cared about them. But they were, they were married. This is the only reason why we're not talking about St. Christopher Columbus. The only reason, okay? Uh, so Catholic Church, huh? Well, the fact that he was Catholic brought another thing that almost nobody knows. If the political correctness now targets Columbus uh, because he thinks that he's a scapegoat for what happened to the Native Americans, and he basically, to them, is a scapegoat for um, uh, treating bad people and denying civil rights, they should know that a hundred years ago Ku Klux Klan targeted Columbus because he was Catholic. There were people on the streets, uh, Ku Klux Klan people, targeting Columbus and hoping to get rid of Columbus Day, okay? So if somebody is about civil rights, he should be, or he or she should be pro-Columbus, not against Columbus, okay? The first Columbus Day in Denver, 1905, saw Native Americans and Italians marching together. Together, okay? So it's not about Native Americans. They marched together with the Italians in 1905, okay? So it's something that was born after that. Uh, President Reagan in 1988 said that Columbus means the American dream. He said that. Uh, now, I said think that ketchup that, was a vegetable also. I'm sorry. I said he said that ketchup was a vegetable also. Mm -hmm. Oh, Reagan. Just for the record. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do <laughs> I mean, a, a political debate. I'm sorry about it's that. It's not a political debate. It is. A it's, political a, political it's a fact. Debate. Well, yeah. let me tell you that in 1963, JFK, is it good JFK? Yes, it good JFK? I don't know. Okay. In the Liberal Republic. Uh, JFK told that Columbus was amazing, uh, uh, celebrating Columbus Day, and he said something I don't know if you know about, that he had Italian blood. Did you know that JFK had Italian blood? Yeah. That's what he said. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah. let me tell you something. Everybody knows that America is not uh, Colombia. We're talking about the United States of America because of Amerigo Vespucci yeah. found out that Columbus didn't go to China, but he went to, uh, to these lands. There's a legend, probably it's just a legend in Italy, in a small town in Umbria called Amelia. Amelia is a town where uh, Alessandro Gerardini came from. Who is Alessandro Gerardini? Who was? He was the bishop that uh, convinced Isabella di Castiglia to give the money to Columbus. Otherwise, he, wasn't, he wouldn't have shit. Okay? He would be arrested. Alessandro Gerardini's family came from Amelia, and some of them immigrated to Ireland, and the name became Fitzgerald. And this is, is the family, the uh, mother family of JFK. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's a legend which says that uh, as long as the, the, the street that brings to Amelia is called Via Amerina, America is called after that. Mm. Uh, probably it's, it's, just a legend. it's probably just a legend, I told you so. But, uh, but that's important because it says that uh, uh, respecting Columbus and respecting Geraldini who helped Columbus 
means something to everybody here in this, in this country. Uh, a few days ago in Norman, Oklahoma, a bunch of students refused to uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance because it was born, the Pledge of Allegiance was born to help people who wouldn't participate to the Columbian 400th anniversary in, uh, in 1892. Did you know about that? Mm -hmm. Well, they refused to, to respect the, the country, the flag, because they wanted to get, go against Columbus. This is what Columbus means. Let me tell you another thing. Uh, 50 years ago, the man went to the moon, right? We're celebrating that. Rocco Petrone, who is one of the greatest Italian-Americans, I think, uh, was born and lived here, said that the only enterprise compared to getting to the moon was the Columbus trips. He said that. He was uh, the head of 20,000 engineers working on that. And when, the, when was the astronauts were asked how to call the Apollo 11, because the Apollo 11 had a surname given by the astronauts, they said, we're going to call it Columbia. Right? So the astronauts, and not those who went to the moon, from the beginning, from Apollo 1, they said, the one Apollo which will bring us to the moon, that we're going to call it Columbia. Not the second, not the third, but that one, okay? And by the way, Columbus is the name of the Italian module on the International Space Station right now. I could go on and on and on. I don't want to speak about Columbus. Everybody's got his own or her own opinion. But let me tell you something. I don't know if I can say that I'm pissed off. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry if, if it's, it's not appropriate. No, I'm pissed is. off when I hear people living here in the United States saying that hurting Columbus means not hurting the Italian Americans. Everybody is entitled in, in his or her own opinion, but not hypocrisy. Uh, have you seen the Columbus parades all over the country? Have you seen that every or almost every group of Italians who are firefighters or lawyers or whatever they are uh, who get together call themselves Colombian. Do you know that 100 years ago the first uh, record company that brought Italian music to the United States in Orleans were called Colombian Records? I could go on and on. So Colombian is Italian Americans. If somebody is against Columbus, that's okay, but he or she should know that he's against Italian Americans too. Then it's up to them. I can respect that, but I don't respect hypocrisy. That's what I think. Uh, so what we do, and, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm too long, uh, we've done a Columbus Day in Italy, the first Columbus Day in Italy ever. This year, October 12, in Siena, Tuscany. Why October 12? Because we discovered something that nobody knew before. Since 2004, Italy has its own Columbus Day, October 12. Proclaimed by the government, it's on with the Italians, the proclamation. And nobody knew that, nobody did anything about that. So we did the Columbus Day in Italy, in Siena. It was a small event, a trial. We will do better in 2020. But what we want to do is wanna, we want to back up the Italian Americans who are fighting against these vicious hate, hate crimes. Uh, and we will do it in Italy because otherwise nobody will do it. Now, I don't want to uh, take credit that I don't have, but on October 11, we did a press conference at the House of Deputies in, in Rome, and we asked President Mattarella, who would come to the United States a couple of days after, to please tell President Trump to fight for Columbus Day. Now, I don't know if he did it. I don't know that President Mattarella knew about that because I spoke personally with his counselor, uh, diplomatic counselor, but the fact is that President Trump said that Columbus Day is not going away uh, and at, at, at least as he is in the White House, which is a, a good result to me, not because I like or dislike Trump, I don't want to talk about politics, but because the President of the United States was pro-Columbus. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know if that was something done by us. I don't mean to interrupt, but would you mention how it started? There was an article about this even. I was amazed at the Wall Street Journal mentioning it. It's Columbus Day. Columbus Day. Columbus Day. Yeah, uh, uh, it started uh, uh, in, in, in uh, I think 1792. Uh, it became a federal holiday uh, with uh, President Roosevelt, 
uh, it became, a, sorry, not 1792, 1892, after the lynching of 11 Sicilians in 